Mother thrice admirable, strong and gentle, in spirit, I kneel before your picture, united with all those who have consecrated themselves to you and are ready to die for your kingdom. We want to mirror ourselves in your image and renew our covenant of love. Make us your instruments, like you in everything, and through us build your Schoenstatt kingdom everywhere. The sun gets ready to go to sleep and invites us to look towards the cynical. There you implored for the church, the Holy Spirit, who freed her from the misery of half-heartedness, guided her to understand the teaching of Christ and instilled in her the spirit of apostles and martyrs. In the same way, you want to work in our shrine and strengthen our weak eyes of faith so that we can see life as God sees it and always walk by the light of heaven. May this same light illumine me now so that I can see with faith how the Father's love accompanied me during this day. May loyalty to our mission be my personal thanks for God's boundless gifts. May glory be joyfully given to the Father, give him honour and praise, through Christ, with Mary, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. So they left the mountain called Olives and returned to Jerusalem. It was a little over half a mile. They went to the upper room they had been using as a meeting place. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James. They agreed they were in this for good, completely together in prayer, the women included. Also Jesus' mother, Mary, and his brothers. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. The second last unit of the Schoenstatt office is the Vespers and that is dedicated to the theme of the Cynical. There the sun is slowly descending and getting ready to rest. We turn our minds to that special room in the life of Jesus and the Apostles. Cynical comes from the Latin word cenaculum, which means the room of the supper. The supper where Jesus shared his last meal with his Apostles before he suffered and died. That was the room where they had shared the bread, which was his body, and had drunk the wine, which was his precious blood. And it seems that this room became like a kind of meeting place in the lives of the Apostles. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, they met there and waited for the promised spirit. Jesus had told them, this is not the end, I will rise and I will send you the advocate who will lead you into the full truth. When this advocate was to come, he didn't say. And it seems that the apostles, according to our tradition, waited for almost two months, 50 days, before the Holy Spirit came upon them and changed their lives forever. One of the most beautiful and original symbols in our shrine at Kersley is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. This is above the altar and it shows a beautiful dove descending from heaven to earth, the rays of fire behind the dove illumining all things. This Holy Spirit symbol was designed by Paul Cooper and was an initiative particularly of the Liverpool groups. They collected over a long period of time, accompanied by prayer and a novena to the Holy Spirit, many pieces of jewellery, personal items from many different people, also from those who weren't involved in Schoenstatt in a direct way. All this jewellery, this gold and precious stones was collected and taken to Schoenstatt to the Brothers of Mary workshop and there, according to Paul's design, they made the Holy Spirit symbol which you can now see hanging in the shrine. That Holy Spirit symbol is therefore very precious. It is made up of people's memories. It is made up of signs of love. There were wedding rings included, engagement rings, deceased mother's rings. There were tokens of love that had been given in the past 
and treasured and cherished by many people, and they were included in that Holy Spirit symbol. So it is one of the most precious, if not original, symbols in our shrine, and reminds us of that first Pentecost, and reminds us of how cynical and how the miracle of Pentecost wants to happen again and again in you and in me. What is that miracle of Pentecost? Father Kentnick describes it beautifully in the opening verses of his prayer. He said, The Holy Spirit came and took away half-heartedness. Half-heartedness means I want something, but I don't want it all that much. I'm prepared to give something, but I don't give my whole heart. I just give a part of me. Whole half-heartedness is something that creeps into our lives and can actually drain our spiritual lives because it has an effect on everything. Everything then is half-hearted. Everything else is mediocre. Everything is only a part of me and not everything of me. You can't be a martyr by half. You either are or you aren't. You can't be an apostle in the true sense of the word by half. You either are or you aren't. When we allow cynical to take place in our hearts and homes, we allow the Holy Spirit to take away that half-heartedness and replace it with that burning enthusiasm for God and that spirit of the first Pentecost. Look what happened. Peter was able to go out and preach to a whole crowd, 5,000 they said, who were converted to Christianity. He must have been pretty inspiring. Stephen afterwards was prepared to give his life and even be stoned to death when he called out that he saw his Saviour coming towards him. The apostles were fired up. They were transformed people. Weak men and women had been changed into enthusiastic and active members who went out to the world to bring Christ's message to everyone. We need Senegal today and we need the Holy Spirit to take away that half-heartedness. What else does he do? The Holy Spirit does something to you and me which is quite unique and that is he strengthens our eyes of faith. You know we have eyes, we see things, we see the world around us but in biblical terms we've always looked at ourselves as people who have inner eyes and these eyes of faith are the eyes that see God and see each other in a different way. Don't you think we need the Holy Spirit to help us to see God in our lives, see how he was present in our lives just today. When we read the Bible, we can discover the living God. When we look at the wonders of nature around us and creation, we can rediscover the God who was present there and who is active there. When we look into our own hearts, we can hear God talking to us in the voice of our soul. Even the events and happenings around us can be tremendous signs of the will of God and the message of God for today. Other people, especially people who want to be windows to God, can be great sources of what God asks of us and how God guides us today. There are many ways in divine providence to discover God's will. All these ways the Holy Spirit helps us with. He inspires, he strengthens our eyes of faith. But the eyes of faith don't only look for God, the eyes of faith also want to see each other in a new way. That we don't just see each other as we would see just another object or another thing. We see each other as God sees us. And that is men and women who have a tremendous dignity. Because we're all heirs of heaven. We're all called to return to God one day. And if we look at each other with the eyes of faith, then we can respect each other more. We can learn to love each other more. We can learn to appreciate each other more because we see each other not just with human eyes, but we see each other with the eyes of faith. Father Kentnick finishes the Vesper Prayer of the Cynical with one last wish. And it's a wish that can be a real source of strength for you and I in our spiritual lives. And that is the grace of gratitude that we can be grateful to God, that our prayer life is determined by gratitude, that we can thank God every day of our lives for the gift of life, for the people we have around us, for the talents that God gives us, and for the time that he has given you and I in this world. 
Our faithfulness to our mission is our personal thanks of gratitude. So let's turn to the Holy Spirit. Let's ask him in the cynical to give us that miracle of Pentecost, that he takes away all half-heartedness and that he leads us to the truth so that you and I can have the spirit of martyrs and apostles for the church of today.